the next subtopic in this chapter, the specialized tissues in animal. Right. So in multicellular organisms, cells undergo cell differentiation and become specialized in structure and function. So this enables uh, the cells to, to form tissues and tissues can associate with each other to form organs and tissues and organs would make up the organ system. Okay, so by definition, tissues are the group of cells with similar appearance and a common function. So different tissues would have different structures to suit the functions. So in animal tissues, we have four categories. So we have the epithelial, connective, muscle, and lastly, the nervous. All right, so we're going to look at the first uh, category of animal tissue, which is the epithelial tissue. So it covers the outside of the body and lines the organs and cavities within our body. And it also contains cells that are closely joined together. So you can um, identify the epithelial cells by looking at two characteristics. The first one is by looking at the shape and the second one is by the arrangement of the cells. Now we're going to look at the shape first. All right, so we have three shapes of, um, of epithelial cells. So the first one here is the squamous. So squamous is actually came from the word scale. Okay, so that means the structure of these epithelial cells are usually they are wide and flat. Okay, all right. Now for the next one is cuboidal. So cuboidal uh, cells would have a cube shape. Okay, it has a cube shape, or you can say, okay, or you can say they have a square shape, or a square, okay. And the last one is the columna. So columna are basically tall epithelial cells, or you can also uh, describe them to have rectangular shape. All right, so those are the three shapes of our epithelial cells. Now, the next one is the arrangement. So we have we also have three arrangement of epithelial cells. So the first one is simple. Okay, so simple right here means single, only one single cell layer. So that one is simple. Stratified is the multiple layers of cell, right? And the last one is pseudo stratified. So pseudo over here, pseudo means not real okay it means not real or you can say they are false or fake or uh, another word that we can use here is artificial okay artificial so it is a single layer of cells of varying length so why do we say it is pseudo stratified it's because it looks like it is stratified but it's actually only a single uh, cell layer Okay, so we're going to look at uh, studio certified uh, in, in more details later, okay? Alright, so these are the epithelial tissues, okay, that are present in animals, okay? And we are going to uh, look in, uh, in more details for each one of these in the next slides. So, but before that, okay, please note the basement membrane over here. So, basement uh, membrane is a thin fibrous extracellular matrix um, that separates the line of uh, internal or external uh, of body surface from the underlying uh, connective tissue. Right? So if you can see over here, most of the epithelial tissues are all attached to the basement membrane. Okay. So now we're going to look at the, um, uh, the first epithelial tissue. All right, so the first one is called the simple squamous epithelium. All right, so um, like we have discussed just now, so simple is a single layer of cell. So squamous is the flat cells. So the cells in the simple squamous are flat and they are arranged in a single layer. All right, so because of the thin and flat structure, so they are perfect for uh, processes like diffusion and this would allow passage of materials. Now you can find them in air sacs of lungs and also the lining of our blood vessel. Okay, right, so moving on to the next one. So this is the simple columnar epithelium. So they are large, brick-shaped cells and they can found, they are found where secretion or active absorption is important. 
for example, in the lining of digestive system, okay, for example, here is the intestine, uh, where secreting of digestive juices and absorbing nutrients happen. Okay, so that one is for the simple columnar. So you can look at the uh, transmission electron micros uh, microscopy image over here. Okay, so you can see the uh, tall cells okay, that are arranged in a single layer. Okay. okay, the next one is the simple cuboidal epithelium. Okay, so they are dice shaped cells and they are specialized for secretion. And they are usually found in the kidney tubules and also in glands, uh, including thyroid glands and also our salivary glands. Right, so you can see over here, so you can see the square shape or dice shaped cells uh, with the lumen in the middle. Okay. All right, so the next one is the stratified squamous epithelium. So stratified means my, uh, multiple layer. So you, we have uh, many layers of squamous epithelial cells over here. So they are multi-layered and they regenerate rapidly, it means that they undergo cell division quite frequent. Okay. So the new cells are formed by division near the basal surface. So where is the basal surface? So it is over here. Okay, so the new cells are formed over here and they are going to be pushed upward. Okay, they're going to they're going to be pushed upward uh, 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 to the apical surface, okay, uh, to replace the dead cells that are slot off. Okay. Now, you can find stratified squamous a lot in surfaces uh, where abrasions uh, happen, right? So, because, uh, because of this, uh, the cells need to be uh, easily uh, removed and also quickly recovered. Okay, so you can find them in the outer of our skin, uh, the linings of the mouth and anus and also vagina. Okay, the next one is the pseudo stratified columnar epithelium okay so uh, take a look over here i hope you guys can st uh, can still see a part of the diagram now by looking at afar you you probably see that these are multiple layers right so they somehow looks like a stratified but if you look carefully for each of this single cell you can see each one of them is attached to the basement membrane so that means that they are a single layer. This, this is a single layer of cell. They look like they are multiple layer, but they are single cell only. Okay, so this consists of a single layer of cells that varying in height, and pseudo stratified usually would have cilia. Okay, they usually have cilia. So uh, you probably can see this the the very fine hairs. Okay, uh, on top of the cells. Okay, like for this one. So this is the cilia, usually pseudo stratified columnar uh, epithelial cells would have a cilia and they form the mucous membrane. So you usually can find them uh, lining our upper respiratory tract. Okay. Now because mucus uh, would trap uh, pathogens uh, and also dirt particles, okay, so the beating cilia would sweep the mucus along the surface and out from our respiratory tract. Okay, next is the glands. So glands are the specialized epithelial tissue. So we have here, the first one is the goblet cells. So goblet cells are the unicellular exocrine glands that secrete mucus. So this is the function of a goblet cell. Now, why do we call it goblet? Uh, we call them goblet because, you know, the, the shape of the cells are very similar. So they resemble the, the goblet. So goblet is, is a drinking glass, okay? That's why we call it, uh, that's why we call them uh, goblet, okay, because of the resemblance over here. Now, the next one is exocrine glands. So, exocrine glands secrete product through a duct or tube onto exposed epithelial surface, okay. And the next one is endocrine glands. So, endocrine glands uh, is a ductless gland, means they don't have any duct or tube. Uh, they just release uh, their product. Or hormones into interstitial fluid or blood. Okay, so we're going to look at some example. So here is uh, some example of uh, specialized epithelial tissues. So the first one here we have the goblet cells. Okay, so you can see uh, the goblet cells are located in between the pseudo stratified columnar epithelial cells. 
okay that secrete mucus and then we have two exocrine glands over here so this one okay so this one is uh, what we refer them as simple gland yes they are exocrine gland but uh, we also uh, describe them to be simple gland so simple gland means that they have a single coiled duct or coiled tube okay so example uh, for this one is sweat gland now for this one this one is called the compound gland. So compound gland, it is an exocrine gland as well. It's just that they have uh, many branch ducts. Okay, many branch ducts. All right. So example for compound gland is the parotid salivary gland. Now, what about endocrine gland? So we don't have any example for endocrine gland uh, over here, but you can add your own. So endocrine glands are glands that secrete hormone, endocrine gland. Okay, so these are the glands that secrete hormone. So you can name any endocrine gland that we have in our body. So I'm just going to name uh, a few. So we have like, for example, here we have adrenal gland uh, that secrete hormone adrenaline. And we do have ovaries, okay, ovaries that secrete estrogen and also testes, okay, that secrete testosterone. All right, so that's all for the first category of animal tissue. Now we're going to move to the next one. Right. So the next category of uh, animal tissue is the connective tissue. So connective tissue are the sparse population of cells that are scattered uh, through an ECM, through the extracellular matrix, um, that holds a tissue and organ in place. Okay, So that's why uh, we have here, it says that uh, the connective tissue mainly binds and supports other tissue. So these are the main uh, purpose of connective tissue. Okay, So connective tissues are made of these three main elements. Okay, so you can have a ground substance uh, that are fluid or liquid, uh, jelly-like or in the solid foundation. Okay, and we also have fibers, okay, in the connective tissue. Okay, so we, for example, here we have collagen fibers, okay, collagen fibers that provide us with strength and flexibility and also elastic fiber, okay, that definitely provide us with elasticity. And then we do have cell in a uh, connective tissue. So example here are the fibrocytes, oops, fibrocytes and also blood cells. Okay. So the extracellular matrix uh, consists of fibers. So remember uh, the last time we've uh, discussed about the uh, ECM. So ECM uh, consists of uh, collagen fibers and they are embedded in the ground substance. Okay, so here are the all six connective tissues uh, that are present in animals. So we have the uh, loose connective tissue, uh, the fibrous connective tissue, bone, adipose tissue, cartilage, and blood. Okay, so we're going to uh, look at all six connective tissues. Okay, so here's the first uh, connective tissue that we have. So this is the loose connective tissue. So the loose connective tissue is the most uh, widespread or uh, we can say they are the most abundant uh, connective tissue in our body. Uh, they bind to the epithelia or the epithelial cells uh, to the underlying tissues and hold organs in place. And they are found in the skin and basically throughout the whole body. Okay, So if you look in the diagram here, so you can see the loose connective tissue would have both collagenous fiber and also elastic fiber. So because of this, loose connective tissue are very flexible. They are not strong. They are not really strong, but they are flexible. Okay. Now, the next one is the fibrous connective tissue. So, fibrous connective tissue are dense. Okay, they are dense with collagenous fibers. Okay, and you can find them in tendons. Okay, tendons uh, which attach uh, muscles to bones. And also, you can find them in ligaments, okay, which connect bones at joints. Okay, and for fibrous connective tissue, they uh, basically would be less flexible. Okay, if we compare uh, between loose and fibrous. Okay. 
Now, the next one is the bone. Okay, so bone um, is the mineralized connective tissue. Okay, so we have the osteoblasts over here. So osteoblasts are the bone forming cells uh, that deposit a matrix of collagen. So this is going to combine with uh, calcium, magnesium and phosphate ions uh, that, in that turn into a hard mineral within the matrix. Okay. Now, you have here what we call as the osteon. So, osteon is the uh, uh, repetitive uh, repetition unit okay, of mammalian bone. All right. And we do have the central canal over here. So, central canal uh, houses okay, the blood vessel uh, that supply oxygen and nutrient to our bone. Okay. Now, the next one is blood. So, blood is also uh, the connective tissue. So, blood has a liquid extracellular matrix called the plasma. And uh, suspended in the plasma are the blood cells. So, we have uh, three main blood cells. Okay. So, they are erythrocytes. Okay. Erythrocytes are the red blood cells. Uh, leukocytes are the white blood cells and the platelets. The next one is cartilage. So cartilage contains collagenous fibers, embedded protein com uh, carbohydrate complex called the chondritin sulfate. So you can see the chondritin sulfate in the diagram here. So they are strong yet flexible support material and the skeletons of embryos contain cartilage but they are being replaced uh, by bone as the embryo matures. Now, um, but there are still some of the cartilage remain uh, in certain location, such as the intervertebral disc. So these are the cushions uh, between the vertebrae. Okay. Now the uh, the last one is the adipose tissue. So these are the specialized loose connective tissue that stores fat in the adipose cells. Uh, so the function of uh, this. Uh, adipose uh, tissue is to insulate the body and stores fuel as fat molecules. Okay, so that's all for the second category of animal tissue. So next we, go, we are moving to the next one, which is the nervous tissue. Okay, so nervous tissue senses stimuli and transmits signals throughout the animal. So the nervous tissue contains neurons or the nerve cell that transmit nerve impulses. And the second one is the glial cells or glia that help nourish, insulate and replenish neurons. So we are going to discuss uh, uh, you know, more detail about neurons in the next semester. Okay, we have a chapter, the nervous system. So we're going to look at all the structure of neurons and, and everything uh, in the, in the in next semester. Okay, stay tuned for that. All right, the last category of animal tissue is the muscle tissue, and they are responsible for many types of body movement. And the cells contain actin and myosin, which together enable muscle to contract. So actin and myosin uh, uh, has been covered uh, in the previous uh, subtopic, which is just in the cytoskeleton. Okay, so please pay attention. Please pay attention to that. Right, so we have three types of uh, muscle. So we have cardiac muscle, smooth muscle, and the last one, skeletal or striated muscle. Okay, so here are the muscle tissues uh, in animals. Uh, in animals. Okay, so we have the skeletal muscles over here, right, and then the smooth muscle and the cardiac muscle. Right, so we're going to look at each one of these uh, in the next slide. Right, the first one is cardiac muscle. Okay, so cardiac muscle forms the wall of heart and they are striated. Okay, means uh, they have the appearance of the repeating bands of the actin and myosin. Okay, and they have uh, similar contractile properties. So uh, to have similar contractile properties, so they have fibers uh, that interconnect cell to cell, which relay signals between them so that they can synchronize uh, the heart contraction. Okay, so for cardiac muscle, they have this one structure called the intercalated disc. So intercalated disc is a, is a specialized junction where the fibers are joined together. Okay, so that would be the cardiac muscle. So next one is the smooth muscle. So this is the smooth muscle. 
right? So this muscle lack striations. Okay, you can see you have less stripes uh, in the structure. So they are found in the wall of digestive tract, uh, urinary bladder, arteries, and other internal organs. So smooth muscles are responsible for involuntary body activity. So involuntary means uh, the actions that we do without our conscious control. Okay, uh, like churning of the stomach and also constriction of uh, the arteries. Okay, and the last one is the skeletal muscle. So skeletal muscle attached to bones by the tendons and they are responsible for voluntary movement. Okay, so voluntary means uh, the activity or the things that we do with our control, like moving your hands, moving your fingers. Okay, so those are the voluntary movement. Okay, so they are consist of bundles of long cell called the muscle fiber. So you can see here, so this is the muscle fiber. Skeletal muscle fiber formed by the fusion of many cells resulting in multiple nuclei in each muscle fiber. So you can see you have a multiple nuclei over here because they are uh, made from a fusion uh, between many cells together. So the arrangement of contractile units or the sarcomere and fibers give the cells the stripe or the striated appearance. All right. Okay, so that's all for the specialized tissue in animals. Till then, bye.